Call the meeting to order. Ask the clerk to call the roll. Commissioner Bailey. Present. Commissioner Lambert. Present. Commissioner Murphy. Present. Commissioner Bundy. Present. Commissioner Smith. Here. There you go. All President accounted for. Let's all stand for the invocation. Yes. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the day that you've given to us and the blessings in it. We just pray, Father, for all those that for that were affected by the storm last week that ran through the county, especially North Star Township, Father. We just pray for all those individuals and their property and that you would be, be with them and bless them. We also want you to bless and, and, and care for those service men and women that are overseas and at home and our first responders, Father, who have been working diligently not only through this COVID event, but just every day, we're helping us to maintain our lives. We ask now, Father, to be with us through this meeting, and it would be pleasing unto you. For it's in his name we pray, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Born and unborn. Thank you. Be seated. Alrighty. Any additions or deletions to our agenda? Hearing none, I would take a motion. Move we approve the agenda. Support. Move we'll support it. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carried. Brief public comments. I understand that someone is going to be on the line that would like to make a comment. Karen, are you there? I'm not, I'm not seeing her. Okay, well, she had called in today. Uh, <coughs> Karen, a, 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 a lady called in today and wanted to introduce herself, but Apparently she's not there. Is anyone else wanting to make a public comment? I'm not seeing anybody else on the list. All right, very good. We'll move on. Consent calendar, board minutes, communications and recommendations from committees. And move we accept the consent calendar. Sure. Moved and supported. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. We're down to administrator's report. Tracy? Not hearing you, Tracy. Unmute yourself. Oh, yeah, that. Good All afternoon, right. George. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, as you might guess, uh, since our last meeting, there I've been putting significant time and effort into preparing our buildings coordinating the preparation of our buildings for the return of staff and the public, uh, which of course was effective yesterday. Uh, to repeat, among the measures that have been taken is that we have signage throughout the building. Uh, we have procured masks to provide to our staff and for members of the public who need one, who can come for their visit. We have hung and provided hand dispensers throughout the building. Uh, these are in common areas for use by the public, and we certainly encourage the public to use them and hope that they will. All offices have been provided hand sanitizer for use by staff. Uh, the cleaning staff have received training and CDC guidelines for enhanced cleaning, and this is primarily of the high touch areas, uh, doorknobs, light switches, of course, the meeting space that you're in, um, uh, cleaning your space uh, before and after your meeting. Uh, the, uh, each office has been provided antiviral cleaning supplies for the wiping of counters, desks, and other high touch areas throughout the day. The thermal camera for reading temperatures at the security <coughs> training station is in place. I did ask uh, our security folks to make sure you had an opportunity to take a look at that and experience that on your way in. I think you'll agree it's a wonderful addition. Uh, to our screening process and I certainly thank you all for um, approving the funding for that. The Commission on Aging uh, Office is still using the handheld device that was previously in use by our security deputies. 
The employee break room is limited to two persons at a time and only for the purpose of retrieving and heating lunches. Uh, tables have been removed from the break room and two have been set up in the old drain office for eating. But of course that area only accommodates a few people. So I suspect staff are finding other areas for eating their lunches. Cough sneeze barriers have been placed at public counters at the entryway. You certainly have seen it at the security station uh, and in some offices where the spaces are tight. I've asked department heads to stagger their employee arrival times and lunch periods to alleviate crowding at the security station uh, in the mornings and afternoons. Um, I'm going to be following up at the end of the week, kind of a, a weekend review uh, and remind them about that uh, at the end of the week. But staff who have been lining up have been uh, terrific about wearing their masks and spacing themselves at a safe distance. Uh, over the period of, I don't know, at least a month or so, there's been a lot of communication about all of these measure, measures. There's been um, uh, a number of emails that I've sent out to staff, department heads, and I think I've been copying you folks on, on many of them. I asked for a little bit of feedback about those uh, and everyone with whom I've met, I've been asking, you know, what, what has gone well and what, what might we need to improve on next time? And uh, the comment I received about my emails is that they were very long. Uh, so uh, after a while, there was a, a fair bit to say. But you know, I sent the emails to all staff about all of these measures, both to inform our staff, but also to reassure them that uh, we take their uh, safety and their health very, uh, very, very seriously. So, uh, my greatest worry, of course, is complacency. I, I don't want us to relax about hand washing and social distancing. For example, we all are making adjustments as we find our masks to be so uncomfortable and as they fog up our glasses and all these kinds of things. But so I'm, I'm going to ask, uh, we, we all have to be accountable for ourselves. And I'm, I'm asking us all as leaders to help folks around us about the importance of following these practices. Moving on, talking about something um, other than COVID, which is a little bit refreshing. The wind turbine tax litigation, we expect an opinion out of the tax tribunal very soon. The dark stores case was in the queue of head of hours and this opinion has now been filed. So the information we have is that the tax judge who heard our cases is leaving uh, her post at the end of the month, which in turn suggests that the opinion should be forthcoming. Uh, we've not been able to access information though about whether her, that term will be extended um, or really what is happening, but we're, so we're really kind of left to read the, the tea leaves about all of that. Uh, when the opinions are issued, they get posted to a website rather than our getting notice that those things have issued. So Jim Wheeler has taken on the task of checking the website uh, daily. He seems to be the best among us at knowing what day of the week it is. So he's, he's the best pick for that job. Uh, once we get, get that opinion, we'll uh, talk about what our next steps should be. And of course, we will keep you folks uh, informed about all of that. Work on the South Annex is nearly done. Yay. Uh, we expect to begin moving our permit staff into that space on Friday, or more likely it will be early next week. Health insurance, uh, through our third party representative, 44 North, um, as you know, we shop each year for the best rates on the best health insurance for our employees and our retirees. Once the rates are in, we assemble our insurance review work group, work group, which is comprised of management and labor representatives for a review of the options. We've been successful each year that I've been here on agreeing among ourselves about the plan to go with. Uh, this collaborative process has many advantages, not the least of which is that the, ins the issue, the insurance issue is decided when we go into contract negotiations. And as a reminder, we are due to negotiate this year with GELC, who I have heard from, and TPOAM, who I have not heard from. Um, let's see, Chris, this is finance committee week. So Chris will probably tell you that we are getting into our budget preparation time. Uh, later this week, our IT folks, specifically Matt and staff from uh, IT Right, will begin developing the IT portion of the capital improvement plan for the next few years. Uh, I'll be sending out a call for project ideas to department heads probably later this week. And Chris and I will be begin working on goals and objectives uh, for your review uh, at an upcoming meeting. 
So that's what I've been able to think of, and that's the list. Thank you. Any questions for Tracy? Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, up next is Commissioner Committee Reports. Chuck? Uh, let's see. Uh, attended a virtual uh, Northern Michigan uh, County Association meeting. They had a real good presentation on broadband. And I'm trying to find which county it was up from the north. Uh, it's, one, it's on the lake. Well, I'll have to get with you a pretty good report. I could forward it so everybody could look at it. They're, they're, they're talking about cooperating between counties to help with the whole broadband okay. initiative and making sure it gets out to all the areas at, as much as possible. Um, let's see, uh, Seville Township, uh, they're working on getting a website going. And uh, they have given Eagle three dates for a meeting with them uh, in June, July, or August. So I uh, don't know when they'll be getting out and around on that. So, um, and then of course we've got what health board coming up this week, George. So that's all I have. All righty. Okay. Airport Authority is meeting on the 9th, and we'll have a meeting before then, so I'll remind you again. I think it's at 6 o'clock, and right now it's tentatively scheduled for the library. That's, they've got a pretty big meeting room, so you know that's a good space for a bunch of people. But I'll confirm that in, the, you know, in our meeting. We'll be meeting again before that. I think. Um, and then Parks and Rec meets tomorrow, and you know, we've been... Sure, we'll continue to talk. We're kind of doing rolling openings with the activities at the park, you know, dependent on as we get staff on board. And we've gotten a lot of questions, and you see a lot of stuff on social media, you know, wondering, well, what's open, what's not open. Um, and, you know, it's really about staff and making sure we got the right procedures in place. So, you know, it'll probably be a while before we are 100% if we ever get to 100% with things like. You know, kayak rentals or stand-up paddleboard rentals, but, but um, we're getting there. All right, one second. There's a there's an un, annoying noise coming from Sam. From Sam, is that Sam making noise? I don't, I don't think so. Uh, I don't hear anything. Let me mute. Let me mute and see. Yeah, it's a squeak. Yep. It's yeah, a, you're getting back feed from Sam. <laughs> yep. <laughs> But Sam just kind of a noisy guy. Anyway. <laughs> I just I just unmuted. Did you hear it stop? Or did yeah. You mute it? Yep. Yeah. It was kind of, It was just. It was just in the background. Yeah. That's it. It's that's feedback. Feedback. <laughs> feedback. Which is what you got heard. Yeah. I think it's probably here. So it's within. Uh, oh, when you're talking here, it feeds back through his system. Right. Right. It comes out of the speakers and goes into the mic. Comes back around to us. So. Yeah. Anyway, um, Sam, you're up next for your committee report. Would you like to give it? Um, met last night in North Shade. Things are rolling along with their windmill projects. They got about 60 that are going in. Uh, they've got all the uh, lay down mats done and all the roads are kind of done. And I seen them hauling windmill blades yesterday down 57. So I think they're headed that way. They've got a bunch of the pads that, uh, that are poured and backfilled. Um, over in Fulton Township, uh, the consumer's project there behind the uh, – gas station on 57 they've got all the ground peeled off and uh, they're having the building brought in uh, to start constructing i think they got some foundation in and so that's coming along real well and uh, that's really about it okay thank you Dan. okay i had one meeting at uh, bethany township uh, it was a very pleasant after evening i guess uh, we had a short meeting but stayed after and just visited uh, the farming is going good already this year, getting their crops in. Good. And, um, you know, I'm anxious for the weather to be nice and do a little bit better than last year. Sure. Um, I attended North Star Township meeting. Um, it, 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 even the townships are having a difficult time meeting because they have to spread apart and do all their things. but. We had a good we had a good meeting. Um, the reason why I was there is to try to coordinate uh, 
our uh, blight ordinance through the townships. There's four different townships uh, that are looking at it, North Star, Elba, uh, Fulton, and Wheeler. And so those townships, are, we're, gonna, we're gonna get together on Thursday to go over their ordinance, but the storm came and they are gonna meet at North Star. And so that had to be canceled. So they're gonna reschedule. And I don't know the date of that, but I will find out. Uh, Elba Township, we had a nice meeting out by the, their little war memorial in town there. We all sat around outside. It was quite pleasant. Uh, and, and again, we talked about the blight and, and so we're coordinating those efforts. Um, they also had to look at their budget really tight. They're, they have a real tight budget. It's a very small budget. And they have a problem with their township hall that's got a, has to have a new roof. And that's going to cost about $10,000 to put that roof on, and that's about 10% of their budget. <laughs> so it's, they were struggling with that. So anyway, um, and then on, on Wednesday, of course, we had our big storm that went through the county that affected North Star Township was the main brunt of it. We, two tractor trailers were tipped over on, on, on 127 because of that. Uh, it looked like a bomb went off over there. I was over there uh, Thursday with our emergency manager, uh, Mike Sopsy, and we went through the area and Dan Morton was there to, to help Mike out to show him how to fill out <coughs> damage assessment reports. These have to be filled out for any damages that we have in a storm by our EOC and those, those reports go into the state of Michigan. What it does is it helps helps back up any any claims or any other problems that they may have in, in securing funds. So that's that's that. And one other little tidbit, and I did not know this, I'm learning more about equalization than I ever thought I would. The equalization department also has to go and they also have to claim damage on the property. And so that has to be sent into the state also. So I didn't know that, but but they but they have to they have to do that. I didn't. That was another something I didn't know. But anyway, I talked to a lot of the residents there. Um, you know, there to, to to the person they all had stiff upper lip. Or um, one person I talked to, uh, I won't tell you his name, but he had just his his lawn was just devastated. He had big maple trees and they were old, and their limbs broke because they were hollow. And came down all the way around his house. Did not touch his house. It was amazing. Praise God. But his truck and his boat, <laughs> they weren't there anymore. <laughs> they were there, but underneath. <laughs> but they were just crushed. Uh, so, but it, I felt that bad. That was all on North Star? Yeah, all on North Star. But they didn't have power for, oh my, a couple of days. So, yeah. and they were, I mean, there was lines and wires, but I tell you what, a community that came together, they all came together. They had the, the farming community there with their big, front end loaders and buckets and they cleaned up brush and it was uh, it was it was pretty neat to see them. they come they come right out and got after it. Middleton Diner provided a meal at, at the township hall outside for them. I mean there was a lot of community spirit over there and I was pretty pleased to see that. So and that's uh that's basically my report. And like Chuck said next Wednesday we'll have a uh, health board meeting again. And hopefully most of us will be it's in Ithaca most of us will be there. Public will be just like they are here, invited by Zoom or video, whatever they do. But anyway, they'll, they'll be able to, to come in so that way. All right. Now we're going down to consideration of new business. And I think Rodolfo's got that. We got, Matt, you got Rodolfo on the line? Yeah, I'm calling hey, him in right now. Bring him up. There he is. Hey, Rodolfo. Hey, Rodolfo. You're looking better than I am, right? Tell you. <laughs> Go ahead. Got to unmute. Got to unmute. Remember, remember to unmute. There you go. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yep. yep. Got it. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity to meet with you here remotely give you an update on what we're doing. Uh, I will be uncharacteristically brief. 
Uh, <laughs> I wanted to give you an update on the uh, job reclassification that you approved for uh, Sue Edmonds to become a veteran service officer, as well as uh, continuing to do office administration. I'll talk about our remote operations we've been doing, uh, the, the grant and what we're going to have to do to amend it. And then a little bit about the billboards and newspaper ads that hopefully you've, you've seen a little bit already. In terms of the job reclassification, the, the COVID-19 uh, caused several key uh, cancellations. <clears throat> Sue was supposed to go to Atlanta this month uh, and become uh, VA accredited uh, down at uh, the National Association of County Veteran Service Officers uh, training. Uh, obviously that was canceled. Uh, the impact of that is that we won't have her available to start to do claims uh, now until August when she attends the Michigan Veterans Affairs Agency's VA accreditation. But uh, Lord willing by uh, the 1st of October, she should have still completed that and we should have a new veteran service officer VA accredited on board for that. In the meantime, she has not been idle. She's completed all the remote type of online training that she could. Uh, one of the key things that the VA has is called TRIP training. It's extremely comprehensive, 40 hours of online training with tests. Uh, she completed all of that. She's also completed all the other mandatory VA training that she can up to this point without VA accreditation. Uh, once she gets accredited, there will be a couple more steps involved, uh, including getting fingerprinted and getting her card uh, so that she can, and background investigation so that she can uh, have her VA remote access. But she's on track uh, as far as we can with the COVID. Uh, so that's, uh, that's an update. And again, thank you for reclassifying that position. Uh, that, that's going to be a huge step forward once we get our VA accredited. Moving on to report, remote operations, uh, I gave you my slides. Uh, and I want to I do want to mention again, first off, that everything that we have done remote is uh, would not be possible without the work that Matt does. Uh, the whole county courthouse knows that, but Matt has been particularly instrumental in helping us and making it possible. Uh, also within our department, uh, Sue Edmonds has been our courthouse hub, one of those key personnel that the gov governor authorized that allows others to remote work remotely. Uh, she's been working in the courthouse one day a week throughout this time frame, and John Tripfelder has provided the vision for us even before COVID, when once we hired him in, uh, he was uh, given me uh, insights into what we what was possible and COVID has simply accelerated that movement. Our, our original goal before COVID was to be paperless uh, by October 1st. And in terms of how we do our claims, that goal should still be achievable. Uh, we will not be uh, eliminating the files uh, until we can uh, return to having Sue in the courthouse more often, but th that was an internal objective that I've just put aside for this fiscal year. Uh, we have been remote since uh, the 24th. Uh, John, I've been, I haven't been in the courthouse since March 24th and, and neither is John Trippelder and the work has gotten done. John tells me, and I believe him, that he is as effective not, and efficient uh, efficiency being the key there, we're both being effective, but he's, he's as efficient remotely as he would, would be in the courthouse. That comes in part from his past experience before he hired on when he was working for Progressive Insurance. And so he's, he's very comfortable and transitioned very quickly into working remotely with uh, the clients. Uh, for myself, I've been learning, but the old the old uh, dog can learn new tricks, <laughs> and uh, and I I have been uh, learning uh, more, and we've been uh, my efficiencies have been improving. The effectiveness uh, remains there. 
uh, and so we continue to move on a fast pace. One of the things that we've been able to do through the grant that I'll talk about in a second is obtaining hush mail, which allows us like the banks to, to uh, go out to the veterans securely through emails with documents that are private and meets the HIPAA requirements. And, uh, and so uh, we're, we're able to do that with our veterans now through, through hush mail. And uh, with our amendment, we're going to uh, get uh, another uh, technology that'll allow us to actually have them sign if they have a smartphone sign things remotely right on their smartphone, just like the banks do. So it's, for me, it's been uh, quite amazing. I, I was not familiar with all of these things, but we're moving as fast as the uh, technology becomes uh, financially available and the grants helping with that. Uh, once again, uh, effectiveness was never an issue. Uh, some might say that, uh, that it's, it's more effective for me in a sense because I like to, uh, I just like to talk to the vets when they come in and we relate very well over the desk. But sometimes that can get you sidetracked uh, whereas the phone conversations are pretty much down to business. Uh, I get the information I need, we move on. And, uh, and so that there's a plus and a, and a minus to that. But I think in terms of uh, efficiencies, uh, it's actually been a help as well. Um, speaking with the administrator, we're, we've set up a pilot program. We're going to remain remote through Labor Day. And we're, uh, we've been tasked uh, by Tracy to uh, develop a, a list of what else might be possible. Uh, so a, a, uh, some things maybe we won't be able to buy uh, but uh, either through the grant or through our budget, but we're just going to come up with what else we could use and uh, and be able to report that back in Labor Day uh, after after we've gone through the summer, continuing to refine our procedures for remote operations. What I have found is that uh, this is I, I truly believe this in the future, the remote appointment will be the majority appointment. It'll be the appointment that most people want to have rather than coming in the courthouse, even after all the, the uh, masking and Lord willing that someday we don't have to do all of that. But, but what we're finding is the, the younger veterans and young being more a state of mind in some ways than it is an age, but those who are technologically savvy actually prefer to not have to take time off work necessarily to travel into the courthouse. And so we're, we're finding that um, everyone's very receptive to this. Uh, I say everyone, the, the overwhelming majority. And so we're gonna continue to refine our procedures. And, and, but I think the day, the day may come sooner than we expect when, when, when we offer this capability, people are actually gonna opt for it rather than coming in. Uh, we will, uh, when we can re return to having that option, certainly. And, and one of the big things that we had to stop because of COVID was the St. Louis outreach. Uh, that was extremely popular. And someday we'll go back to that uh, as, a, as a option. But we found people have been very receptive to remote. Uh, the next, uh, if you don't have any questions on that issue, the next thing I wanna work on or move on to quickly is the progress with the grant. Now, the, the grant went into effect uh, for us on March 1st. Uh, it paid retroactively back to October for those for John Tripfelder's salary and, and benefits and so forth. But uh, for most of our other initiatives, it began on March 1st. Uh, so we had to cancel uh, any of the outreach uh, events and training events that we had because of COVID. So that, that had to go by the wayside. Um, however, uh, we have continued with our ads. You may have seen them in the, in the Herald uh, and I, I, you may have seen the billboards or if you haven't, they're going up shortly uh, that tell that we have call for your remote appointment. And so we're getting the word out 
that we're still working remotely and uh, we're getting the phone calls. In fact, with these cell phones, once, once we make contact with the vet, they know where we're at. We can't hide anymore <laughs> behind the 5258 number. And so they'll just call with updates and so forth. And, and uh, it, it, it's been, it's been a, an interesting transition. Uh, the grant will require amendments. Uh, so the, uh, but we're, we're in the process of that. I don't have it ready for you today, but I will need the chairman's signature on that uh, before the end of the month. And, and we'll be getting that to him just like we did the last one for signature. Uh, the, the grant amendments have to be in by the, uh, the 30th or you, of June, or you can't amend after that. We're primarily rolling the money from things that we had to cancel into additional advertising and additional technological enhancements. Uh, one of the things that, um, so that I did have to change was our Korean War event. Uh, we were going to remember uh, the Incheon invasion 70th uh, uh, anniversary is, is September 15th through 19th. Uh, one of the greatest uh, military envelopments in the history of warfare. And uh, we were going to use that as a platform for honoring our, our Korean War veterans. Now, because of the COVID, uh, it just doesn't make sense to bring them out into a ceremony. So one thing that we're going to do is we're going to have uh, ads that, uh, that recall their service. We're gonna have a billboard that we use that as, you know, we'll get the advertisement value to contact us, but we're gonna actually have a billboard up there remembering uh, our Korean War veterans. Uh, on, uh, I'm not sure on the location yet because we can't finalize that till the amendments approved and, and the contracts are signed. But, but that was probably one of my biggest disappointments. I've been planning that for several years, but reality is what it is. And, uh, but we're gonna, still gonna honor them uh, and when the time comes, we'll have something to come together, uh, but not right now. So, so that's what's going on with the grant. Again, with the billboards, you've seen those. Uh, the theme, we're here for you now more than ever. And uh, we look forward to continuing to serve our veterans uh, in that fashion. Um, so I believe that's it. I, I left out all the usual bragging slides uh, so we're still doing good. We're still number one. This year's uh, rankings came out again. We're still number one in our region. Uh, and that's because of the hard work that the people in our team are doing. And, uh, and I'm giving the Lord the credit for those uh, extra hard claims that we often win. But, uh, but we, uh, I've, as I always say, we got the best job in the county. I thank you for your support and allowing us to continue to work throughout this time so we didn't fall further behind in serving our veterans. Uh, and that being said, I, I stand ready for your questions. Any questions for Rodolfo? I know he's doing a good job and our, our veterans actually deserve someone that can do a good job and his team has done an excellent job and we just, I appreciate it. Being an old vet like me, I like that. Any questions? I would, I would agree with that, George. One thing you mentioned, you're getting a lot of cell phones. Are, are you using cell phones? If yes. You're, if the vets are, are, have a cell phone themselves, you might be able to develop a good tool by texting back and forth with some of these people, you know? Have you looked at that at all? Well, um, we cannot, because of the HIPAA requirements, we stray away from text or Zoom or anything like that with the veteran at this time. One of the things we're gonna be looking at in, the, in our uh, remote pro, um, pilot program is identifying uh, some technologies that will allow us to do that with the veteran. Uh, but right now, uh, it, you know, the conversations that we, that we have with them are all about personal uh, medical information that we just can't do through the, the normal uh, texting and, and normal Zoom. 
Yeah, I just think that's another way you could communicate non yeah. tech non yeah. medical stuff. Right, right. Know. And we do and we do that. We do we we talk to them on the cell phones and, and we get the information that we need on the phone, but in terms of creating text and and uh, so forth, we we have to make sure we, we don't uh, get outside of of the the requirements for the VA. Otherwise, we'd lose our certification. Rodolfo, as you, uh, as you look into that, feel free to call my wife, Ann, at Elma College because they had to do the same thing for their counselors, you know, for remote counseling. And so they found, and I couldn't tell you what it is, but I know they found, you know, the equivalent of Zoom that is HIPAA compliant, you know, that's secure enough and checks the boxes. And so she'll know, you know, so that's because right. she's already done the legwork. What do you, my question is, I, you know, I saw the billboard and I've seen the ads and I think it's great, you know, because as good of a job as we do in connecting our veterans to services, you know, there's 2,500 veterans in Gratiot County and they're not all getting services. Have you noticed an uptick? Have you, have you had people say, I saw the billboard or I saw the ad in the paper yet? You know, I know they haven't been out that long, but are you actually, do you think you're getting some traffic from that? We, we, we haven't yet. It, it hasn't, hasn't uh, taken hold yet, uh, okay. but, but we anticipate that there will be. And, uh, and, We've got a few a few other things that we're we're going to try to do in the ads to try to invite them to to come and get services, but uh, but no, we haven't seen any increase yet. One thing I will mention though is that uh, you know for years I would come before you and I'd say I'd tell you how how the big dollar claims we'd win and how many vets we'd helped and all of that, but but I could never solve the taken five weeks to say, see Rodolfo for your new claim. And John Trifelder is handling people within a week now. I mean, there's little hiccups, you know, at Christmas time, it went out a little further. But now, uh, Sue is checking the phone, the 5258 number remotely, and, and passing off to John the names of who left their messages, and he's contacting them. Uh, they're normally getting phone calls within a day or two, and then their, their work is being done quite often within a week. So, so the new claims are moving along at an unprecedented pace. Uh, mm -hmm. And the reason for that in large part is before I had a mixed, mixed uh, menu. And so a new claim might not take very long, but it might be in line behind you know two appeals or something like that. Whereas now I just work in appeals queue, you know, and, and I look, there's, an, uh, there's a year long time frame you have to do an appeal. And sometimes it'll take, I, I worked on one and I wanna thank you for the opportunity to do this. It took me three days. So that's eight times three, 24 hours just about of labor on a particular claim. And this is too small a county to give you any details, but but that claim went out first class, that appeal. And again, on an appeal, you got to understand if it, if it would win itself, it would have won the first time. <laughs> so, so it takes the research into the medical records, into the VA records, and, and all of that that I'm able to do now. But, but the reason that it was taken five weeks before is one of those might have been in front of two or three new claims. And now those new claims are going straight to John. They're being handled. They're going out the door. And I'm still being able to have the time to do the quality work on the appeals without having to worry about those new claims. But the new, that, that old five weeks to see Rodolfo, that's history. And, and it's because of your support and allowing us to, uh, to hire John and keep him on. And then uh, and the grant. And it's going to get even better once Sue is accredited by the VA uh, this August. Good. Any other questions? Yeah, John, um, do you have a lot of walk-in traffic? I mean, is the office is only open one day a week now this summer is gonna be? Is it's... No, we do don't. We don't. Right? Yeah, the, well, Sue is there on Wednesdays primarily for administration. We, we, we discourage walk-ins. 
And, and the reason for that is COVID primarily, uh, but also because as long as we're operating remotely, when she goes in there, she, her primary function is to be the hub, moving the paperwork that arrives through the mail and has to be uploaded and sent off to the VA. Now, that's going to change also. We've got really the, that perfect storm is an overused term, but we have a convergence here of technological changes we we're already in the process of making, plus the COVID and everything. But we don't, we don't get too many walk-ins. We don't discourage them. And we're not alone in that. Right now, Isabella County, my counterpart in Isabella County, he's just a one-person office. He's in the courthouse every day, but he's doing all of his work remotely because he doesn't want to have to bring the vets into the courthouse. Because a lot of our, uh, the folks we're helping are, are in the more vulnerable category uh, for age. I mean, the younger ones aren't necessarily due to age, but uh, all of our clients have some health issue because that's what we do is disability claims. And so, so uh, we, we don't have a lot of walk-ins right now. And, and frankly, most of our clients would rather not Come, they, they didn't particularly like coming through security before that we had all the COVID issues. And so now they're quite, as I said at the beginning, they're, they're pretty happy on, on the most, for the most part to do things remotely. Do you, do you, is there any way you're going to tr be able to track the numbers of, one of the concerns I have is that Gratiot, I think, is one of the counties that have really not, not great service for internet and I, I've seen this through the schools they were talking about trying to get kids up and doing some school work and stuff through the schools when they shut down and they did a survey is my understanding and that there wasn't a lot of internet traffic out there that could be had by people that didn't have that have dollars to, to connect to the school internet and I'm just wondering are we gonna are we gonna miss anybody because they don't have that or I mean how will that be resolved you know if that is an issue there from the school point I think it was but Will that reflect to the parents? Um, well, it, I, I think, I don't think we've missed anybody so far. We can deal with the exceptions. If someone says, hey, I just can't do things remotely, we can send them the paperwork through the mail. We can, as I said, most of the information we get over the phone and we put on the forms and then we send it to them in the mail. And, and then... Uh, they sign it. Right now, during the COVID, a lot of forms we're signing for them because we have power of attorney. And so we can sign, uh, the VA allows us to sign many forms, but not all forms. And so the forms that the veteran or the client needs to sign themselves, we're sending them in, the, in US mail and they're sending it to Sue. And that's what I was saying. Then she takes it, uploads it and, and submits it electronically. So I don't think we're going to miss anybody. Um, I mean, we, like I said, we're, we're responding faster than we have ever responded to them. I mean, I'm embarrassed to say it now, but you remember there was a day when my answering machine said, please do not leave a message. It said, I, I was picking up the phone if I was in the office and said, please call me back on Tuesday. Please do not leave a message because I'd have so many messages. I wasn't getting all the calls returned. That's, that's history, that's not happening now. People are, are being helped. And as we're responding to whatever their needs are. We've done, you know, we can do claims for the nursing homes. We can do, we can do claims uh, through the, you know, we need, just need the information to put on the paper. And, and beyond that, we send it to them and they, they sign it and, and bring it in. So, no, I don't think we're gonna miss anybody. Uh, uh, and and on the on our courthouse doors right now, it, it has copies of the ad that says "Call for your remote appointment" for the days when Sue's not in there. So, I don't I don't think we're going to miss anybody. Okay. Okay. Well, once again, Rodolfo, thank you for your service and keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was the Army's birthday the other day. Yeah. Yeah. Just. <laughs> Just remember, the Army's older than the country. You want to have That's a country? Right. You need an Army. <laughs> Good old Georgie Washington. <laughs> yeah. All right, you take care. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, we have in person with us.
for extra county's finest. I Morris is here to give us a sheriff's report. Thanks. Okay, but you know what? We're going to be glad to take it. Well, you know, I was going to do this the second meeting in March, and, you know, that's when everything broke loose. So okay. better late than never, I guess. Um, I'm sure you've had a chance to look at it. I just wanted to go on some highlights here. So if you go down to the breakdown of man hours in the section, um, you'll notice, like, our detective hours dropped by uh, over 500 hours. The reason that that dropped is because at the end of 18, I was outgoing as a detective. We were training a new detective to take my spot. So we had some hours. So we're back down to about normal in 19 for that. Um, Part-time deputies hours were down almost 700. That's due to lack of recruits. I mean, there's just not any police recruits coming out. So, and same thing for patrol hours. I mean, my patrol hours are down because I had two positions that I didn't fill until uh, September of last year because of lack of people to, to fill them. So we got by, but um, if you go to secondary road patrol hours, those were up, but here's why. People that we were training were riding with a secondary road patrol officer who was an FTO. So their hours reflected as being on training as secondary road patrol because they were doubled up in a car. So that's why we have more hours in the secondary road patrol. Community relations were down, but I'm gonna tell you why it's down. It was being coded wrong. So when, when they were doing um, like property inspections, they were code, some of the officers were coding them as community relations. So you'll see when we get to that part that those actually went up. So it kind of balanced itself out. Um, bailiff's hours were up a little bit. That's due to some hearings that uh, were running later in some of the courts during the day. I've adjusted the hours to try to uh, deal with that. So you go to the next page. Um, mileage was down about uh, 21,000 miles for the whole year. That's due to uh, being down some officers in for secondary road patrol. Plus they were sitting more stationary and to ask them to do that, cut down on the mileage on the cars a little bit. Other you were see up about 11,000, but that's because we had a second full-time detective with a detective's car that uh, so that's why that went up. Um, gasoline you'll see was down and other vehicles was up and that's due to having the second detective car. Uh, traffic stops were down, that's due to uh, lack of officers and down amount of officers. We're at full capacity now or pretty close uh, with one assigned to the court, we're actually at full capacity. So, okay, so then you go to here, the property inspections, you'll see that's up um, compared to when we had the, uh, uh, the previous page where the community relations is down. We've coded some things different, but we also, that's more community oriented too. We got the officers out more on foot and doing property inspections at night, even out in the out county areas. So um, here's one that's a little misleading because crime is actually down in Gratiot County, but it says felony arrests were up. The reason why uh, felony arrests are up is because there's a couple of reasons. Some of them were multiple suspects with multiple charges. So you got like a a uh, felony drunk driving, a fleeing, a looting, and a resistant obstruct, you get three charges on that. Some of this is also due to uh, parole and probation, sending uh, parole violators over to us. So when we go and make that arrest for parole and probation, like at their office, that counts as a felony arrest because they're a, a felon. So uh, you'll notice that accidents was down just slightly. Fatal accidents was up a little bit. We had the misfortune of a few that were probably unavoidable, but, uh, and then you see we had eight total fatalities for the year and one of them involved uh, drugs or alcohol. Um, not too much out of the ordinary, the rest on that page there. If you go to the next page, money, county, uh, money uh, for the county treasurer, you'll notice it. We didn't have any vehicle inspections. Um, our salvage vehicle inspector uh, got out of it in the early part of 2018. We had not filled that position. I posted it just before COVID hit and I had two officers that were interested in going to salvage vehicle inspection school. I got to just wait for a class to open back up now and then I'm gonna send one of the two of them to that. That's a little bit of money maker for the county. Um, you make $100 per um, salvage inspection and it's gonna be about half that the county makes and half the makes for doing that. So we'll make a little bit of money there. If I can get that back up and running that program and it's important because now they have to have a salvage inspector come from out of county 
to, to do salvage inspections in Gratiot County, I think it's important that we have one of our own. So, all right, if we go to the um, crime. Um, one of the big ones that's, I think was great is the breaking and enterings and general larcenies are down in Gratiot County. Um, that's attributed to two things, I believe. The economy was good, so people aren't going out and breaking in places and stealing. And also we had a lot of people that had done these crimes in Gratiot County locked up either in our county jail or in the prison system. So <laughs> taking a lot of people off the streets. And you'll notice that uh, larcenies were down some. Um, you go down to the file class 3000, that's retail frauds. Walmart is the reason for that. And the, the reason is they've installed cameras on all their registers now. So they're catching people under ringing or just uh, walking through the self checkouts. And every time they get one, they send it to us. So we were up and that's uh, been keeping one of my detectives quite busy. Um, violation of Control Substance Act, way down. That has to do with uh, marijuana being legalized. Uh, a lot less marijuana arrests now. Um, if you'll notice, uh, if you go to the next page, smuggling, we were up five in that. That's from in the jail. So if somebody comes in with a, a controlled substance in the jail, even though it's legal on the outside world, it's considered smuggling. So uh, those were up a little bit. And that's because marijuana is legal and they forget that they have it on their person. And so uh, miscellaneous runaway, we were up 11 from the previous year of zero. I did a little research on that. That's about the same person that ran away 11 times. So excuse the numbers. So. Um, I think there's a problem there, sure. Yeah, <laughs> I think they're part of the probate court system. Um, accidents, like I said, we're down a little bit in 2019, uh, you know, almost 50 accidents. Um, then if you go to property inspections, this was being coded wrong too. We went from 19 to 71. Property inspections are where we do housing inspections, like people are gone for winter and stuff like that. And if we check them every couple of weeks or every three weeks, that's how that number got inflated and we got that coded right now. Uh, natural deaths uh, were up quite significantly and Sam would attest to this. Uh, our uh, community is getting older. Gresham County, the people of the county are getting older. So you're gonna have more natural deaths. Um, violation of probation, that's also an MDOC thing. That's up a little bit. They've been violating more people for this uh, probation instead of parole violations too. So that's how that number gets up. And uh, other than that, on the next page, everything is pretty much in line uh, to what I had said. So I'd be happy to take any questions from anybody, if anybody had any questions. Oh, questions. questions. I see on your peeping Tom, you had four people. Is that the same person each time? No, I don't think so. Peeping Tom can be, it's how they code it in the computer, but it can be, uh, you got somebody looking in the windows, not necessarily arrested as a peeping Tom, but that's how it gets coded in the computer is how the complaint comes out, so. Okay. And then I have another question here for, um, you didn't run accidents. I was surprised to see that that was 54. 54 people were hit and they left them? Yep, so a lot of them are private property like Walmart, um, you know, or out there in, in private property and he gets their car backed into and the it takes it's off. And, yep. and so, you know, even if you go up just, uh, you know, we went up 22 of those last year, but that happens. Um, or if somebody's mailbox is struck or whatever, it's called a hit and run accident, so. Okay, and the other one was drug overdose. I, I guess I thought that would be really high. I thought there was a lot of people that. Well, that, always going out on it. that had spiked for a few years and now it's gone back down a little bit. So um, just depends on what substances are coming into the county. What are the substances now coming in? Well, heroin's a big one, and we still got a lot of meth coming in. Yep. Yep. One thing I did want to mention is uh, um, sex offenses. I mean, they're holding about steady uh, criminal sexual conduct, and then you have a couple other uh, sex offense, a uh, couple other ones. Those are holding steady, and... Um, those will never change. And I have a specific detective that's assigned to doing uh, sexual crimes on children and adults. So. Is that usually family oriented? Like, you know, something that's in the family or is that outside people? Uh, most of the time it's uh, somebody that they know. Wait, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. oh. Sam, you got any questions? 
Uh, unmute yourself. Sir. There we go. Okay. Hey, hey, Mike. Um, this is not about your report. You know, I I've been just listening to a lot of this trash on the TV about policemen and things like that, and I just think it's terrible. You know, and and I was sitting at the corner this morning about I don't know six o'clock and seeing one of the patrol cars go by, and I thought. Wonder how those guys are feeling about this. I mean, how how is your department? Is it do they take a lot of this to heart? What's going on with police? You know, I, I when he went by, I thought to myself, why the hell would you want to be a policeman? You know, and and I just kind of sat there on the corner waiting for the guy to turn the sign to go. They were doing some work on Elger Road, and I just thought it's just kind of a bad deal. I mean, is this affecting your department morale at all or anything? No, we're trying to keep the guys up. You know, I got a great bunch of uh, staff that works for me and, and Sam, um, they're keeping their heads up. They know that we don't have that type of people here in Gratiot County that are gonna do that. I'm speaking for the sheriff's office and I can, I can honestly speak for the other departments too. That, you know, we try to screen out the uh, officers, even though we are in dire need for officers, try to screen them out that, you know, we could see a potential problem. and. And I think it's uh, worked well. Our screening process and our and our interview process has helped that we don't bring in those type of people. Yeah, there are some bad ones out there, but the greatest majority of police officers are good people. Well, yeah, and, and I know that, and, I, and I'm not asking if you any bad ones. I'm just thinking. I would just think the morale of a policeman riding around and he's got the regular radio on, thinking about these cops are bad all over the all over the United States, you know, and I'm one of them. And I just I just didn't know yeah. their morale is, you know. I'm, I'm feeling bad for this guy driving by, you know, and I'm thinking, Nick, yeah. they do a great job. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I told you that it was hard to get police officers last year. I hate to lose any right now because it'd be really tough to get somebody. The police yeah. academies are just not full. Nobody wants to do it anymore, and it's sad. Yeah. Well, speaking for myself and my family, I think the all your your department and everybody in Gratch does a wonderful job. And um, I just was thinking about that this morning as I saw that officer drive by, and I was waiting for an asphalt truck to go by. But I, I just thought of that, and I thought well, I wanted to ask you tonight about it. So I'm I'm glad there's not a problem at all in your department with no no we're we're doing morale good. Like that. Morale is outstanding, and and we're doing good. good. So thank you for asking, though. Okay, anybody else? Any questions? All right, thank you. Right. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you for coming in, Sheriff. Appreciate it. Always, always a pleasure to have you sitting in there. Okay. Jennifer Woods has got some grants that she'd like us to approve. I don't think Jennifer's gonna be here, but- the, Oh, there she is. And, I'm here. Oh, there she is. <laughs> Hi, Jen. I didn't know you were here. All right, you're up. All right, thank you. Um, I'm just here to ask for the board's agreement to allow the courts to con ask for continued or apply for continued uh, funding for the specialty courts. There, I've given the approximate amounts that we're going to apply for or we're looking to apply for in the memo that's attached. And what we need essentially is authority for the chairman um, to sign the necessary documents during the application and the acceptance process. It's really just a continuation of the services that we've been providing for quite a few years now. Yeah. So do we need a motion on each one of these? No, well, you just need a motion to allow the chairman, chairman to be able to sign these. Okay, I'll make a motion that we allow our chairman to sign the uh, grants for mental health. Um, District Court and Circuit Court, Family Treatment. Yep, there you go. Support. And motion to support, all right. Do we have any other discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you all Thanks. for your support, I appreciate hey, it. I, I, forgot, I forgot to unmute. Hey, Jennifer, just yeah. real quick. Did these come through, these grants come through um, like, I mean, we did this and we did this before this year. Is this a yearly thing or is it just an off time to do them or? No, this is, we do this annually. We, we have to make application to, to receive the funding each year. So when the funding comes in in our budget year then, I mean, so this money will come in like October? Right, we won't, we won't hear until approximately the end of September what, what, we, what award we've gotten and it'll be part of next year's. It'll be um, next year's budget, budget then, I yeah. see. Okay, all right. So yep. you're just applying yep. for them now. Yes. Okay, thanks. Jennifer, I have one more question for you. Okay. 
Each one of these, are, there, are they through all the state or is some of it federal? These are state grants. I see, I'm sorry, I see that okay. now. I, did, okay. I missed that. All right, anything else? All right, thanks Jen for your patience. Thank you very much. Thank all you. Right. All right. Done. All the way down to consideration of unfinished business, and I don't believe we have any. So at this time, I will entertain a motion that we move into the finance committee meeting. I move. Support. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Searcher. All right. Let's call the finance full board meeting to order. Uh, financial administrator's report. Is Chris lurking out there somewhere in the ether sphere? The ether sphere. The cybersphere. Oh, he looks like he's in the courthouse, actually. I am here. Yeah. So we got first up on our list. Um, we have our cash balances for our general fund, delinquent tax fund, tax sale fees and proceeds, and then our Residential or residence denial interest. Um, you will see our general fund is falling still in between uh, 2018's and 2019's cash balances. Um, so we're in a, in a good spot with our general fund. Overall, does anybody have any questions on our cash balances? We kind of know why they're there. <laughs> If not, we can move on to our check disbursement reports where um, you'll see the, the deliverance in the two formats, the checks over $10,000 and then our complete register. I will give you uh, a few moments to look that over if you haven't already and I will take any questions that you have. I didn't see anything. No, 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 it's all normal as far as I can see. <clears throat> Every time you look at these, you say, man, we spend a lot of money on drains, don't we? <laughs> oh, I, I found it. I did have one. The Isabella Bank for 185 630 uh, Do you know what that is? That would be um, a bond payment. Bond? Yes. That's interest? No, it would be principal. Principal and interest. Okay. How much did you say it was for Chuck? I didn't. 180, 185, 630, and 19 cents. Yep. 154 is interest, and yeah. 31 and change is. Yeah. Excuse me, 154 is principal, and 30, 31 and change is interest. Yeah. Okay. Let's see where you're at. Chris, okay. I had one on the uh, 101 Motion Picture of America. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got that question. That <laughs> you into movies or? Um, I, asked, I asked you that today. <laughs> I do enjoy movies. Um, but that is a, um, George, what was that? Restitution payment. Restitution. Uh, it, yep. was from a, it was from a court case that the judge uh, found against the plaintiff, or the defendant, and the defendant had to pay the, the plaintiff restitution. That's so they run that through us. He, they rush to the clerk's office. I phoned out that. <laughs> yeah, that's how, I believe that's, that's how we know. That's part of our proof, right? So that keeps us from tracking somebody down and saying, hey, did you ever pay that? Did you ever pay the person you were supposed to pay for restitution? Well, well, well it pay us. It runs to the court. Yep, and then we pay it, mm -hmm. and that way, that way we know. Yeah. So. Exactly. I, I, Sam is amazing because I saw that today and I'm going to text Chris because I don't understand that one. But it was <laughs> going to the movies. I said, well, what are we buying a movie now? Or <laughs> no, it was good. <laughs> I, I was just thinking I didn't get invited over to watch. <laughs> <laughs> so I assumed it was restitution, but I was kind of thinking what it would possibly be, you know, because like every once in a while schools get in trouble, you know, you know you're not supposed to you, know, you can't like rent a movie and then show it to your class. That's oh, no. a public that, exhibition and schools don't know. That. Every property property rights, you can't oh, that. it's the day before Christmas. Let's go rent this movie and put all the kids in the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. No, you can't do that. You know, you got to pay. There's a big fee. And I was kind of wondering what, you know, 
But what, who, that was it. Yeah, that I found that I found that interesting today myself when I looked it up. <laughs> well, that information is confidential. Angie doesn't share with me the uh, proceedings. She just tells no, me who to pay it. and how much to pay. Yeah, yeah. He, she, he just realizes that when Angie puts that in, what it's for. Okay. Any other questions on the checks? <clears throat> All right. Treasurer's report. Evening. Well, if you guys don't mind, I'm going to put it under my nose. If not, I'm going to fog up. And I get I'm sitting here doing the same thing. I can't see anything. Um, investment report, you'll see that there are no new ones. Um, there's not anything good out there right now. We all know why. Uh, the bank transfers are just your typical. The, the big one of the 568 is road commission where it comes into our general fund and then we switch it out and put it in their account. And the other ones are just the insurance ones. And then last but least is the check register. And you'll notice that even though we are during COVID, we have been receiving in everybody's money and we took in 2.8 million last month. So business is going on as normal best we can. Keep paying taxes. Good. Yes. And we have not had any complaints that they can't come in. Um, you can do it by mail. You can do it by credit card. Good. Still, so maybe a little more efficiency there. That's good. That's kind of like what Rodolfo was saying. I mean, it's easier. I always think with taxes, sometimes, especially if you're, if you're late, you know, you want you want somebody to write something on a piece of paper Make that it says, all right, I got it, you know. Well, you know, I'm 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 an I'm old school guy, and I worry about people not being able to access their public building. It's it's the people's building, okay? And but we're learning, whether I like it or not, that there's other ways to be able to access the people's building and do it efficiently. It's like having somebody else do your grocery shopping. Yeah, I have to. I'm like, man, I kind of like this it. actually. Yeah. You know, it's I got to admit it, and you know. I know I tell Tracy this is ridiculous. People got to come into their building. But it, that being said, there's a better way, there's other ways to create a, a situation where people can participate. They're online, actually in their comfort of their own home. They don't even have to leave it. And, you know, that's what Sam chose tonight. Sam chose to just sit there and have a good time, drinking, drinking his lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy, really, let me tell you, let me just tell you, I, I knew I'd be later if I tried to come to Ithaca. I was closer to home. <laughs> oh, but thing, my point is, it works. <laughs> or I was just going to sit in a cemetery and hope I had service. <laughs> you might not even said, well, I can't go to the meeting tonight. Yeah. This allows you to right. do that. Right, because you can't make it that time. Exactly. So I, I, I think this technology is going to move forward. And, and, uh, and since we've been able to put this on on the YouTube and, and Matt's been able to utilize the functions of that, I think we're getting a better quality and everything is really pretty good. You know, I I still prefer to be here. <laughs> but anyway, that's me. All right. Any other uh, questions for the trip? Looks like Chuck, you got probably, probably good that we're hanging on to some of these uh, longer ones. Mm -hmm. Probably aren't going to see those interest rates for a while. Nice. Yeah. Uh, what is if you were to get put money somewhere, what, what are they paying? Oh, it's it's bad. It's like 0. 0.98. Yeah. If you get a percent, you're you're not even getting a percent now. Yeah. You're lucky. Yeah. yeah. That's why people refinance their houses. <laughs> oh, I thought the stock market was up. No. It's, it's why it is up. <laughs> oh, I I there's no, exactly. I mean, right now, that's, that is, I think, more than anything driving the stock market because it's like, well, you, you can't get anything. Yeah. Right. 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 And so, so it's like, well, I'll take, I'll roll the dice in the stock market. People that have money have to get some money somewhere. So that's where they go. They get 11, 12 percent on the average. So, yeah, if you're a retiree trying to live off of, you know, CDs that you got, you know, staggered, it's, at the time, I didn't like my last murder statement either. <laughs> no, 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 nobody does. <laughs> oh, that was bad. Hey, and Michelle, uh, just a quick question when you look at Morgan Stanley accounts and Wells Fargo's, they participate in a Cedars program. Have we got anything in there over 250? No, Cedars. no, I don't do Cedars. No, but I mean, does like Morgan Stanley have any insurance over it? We have anything like those guys or Wells Fargo. Over two fifty, we got anything over two fifty in them for the FDIC insured. I'm, I'm sure they do. 
Okay. Anything else? Do we have CDs? Hmm? Oh, okay. How long do you have to have a CD before you can cash those in? Depends on what it is. It depends on how long you want to go out. The longer you go, usually the higher interest rate, but right now. I accidentally found three of them in my safe. That's why I'm asking. Wow. Hey, let's have a party. Yeah. There you go. I have to call the bank. The double E bonds. Well, you know, and Sam, you do raise a good point because, you know, the first time we looked into Cedars was actually the last downturn because, you know, and you were, uh, you know, you've been on a bank board. So, you know, at that point, you know, banks didn't know what other banks had, you know, all the interbank lending stopped because all of a sudden, you know, these companies that, you know, were never going to go out of business, all of a sudden it's like, you know, they didn't have anything. And, well, liquidity. and you know, the you know, the insurance, and they raised it then, but you know, now we're back to 250,000 is the limit on, on accounts. And so, you know, that's where Cedars does does come in. And some of them will just automatically do that, but it's probably something worth looking at. You know, same thing with the sweep. Some of the, now you can get a sweep account, you know, money market account where they'll, you know, they'll spread it out, even if you got a million in there. So, so heaven forbid, the bank goes belly up, you're covered, but. But um, it is, you know, every time you have a big downturn like that, you, you know, you do that make you kind of think, yeah. Well, and it hurts the public institutions. This all hurts the public institutions because we have large sums of money. And there's no way to, where to put it that you can make any, basically anything on your money because the law won't let you to go dabble, which is probably a good thing. Right. But any, that's where we're at. I mean, we'd have to take what we got. We can't, we, we just, it's, it's the way it is. Yeah. I mean, it's worked for us. The good news about low interest rates, you know, there's a silver lining to every cloud. And, and you know, that was part of why we refinance the pension liability. You know, I mean, that was a conversation I remember yeah. having with the with the MERS guy at the at the, at the MAC conference. You know, why, why are you doing You know, why, why are you doing this? You know, well, the re it's, you can't, you're not getting enough money in return. Well, you can't get enough money in return because interest rates are so low. And exactly. That's why we want to go into something else, you know. And, right. You know, that there's... There, there is that benefit, you know, so it's not all bad. I have a question for you, and I don't know if you can answer this. Um, I see a lot of the banks are being sold out, little banks. Well, I thought they were big, but they're being sold out to the bigger banks. Like Chemical Bank has just been sold out. I just, I do business with them, and uh, they just sent me a, a packet to go over because everything's going to change. Um, are you finding, how do you feel about that as someone that's investing? Like I know First Bank is no longer with us. Chemical Bank, they've closed all of their banks except for in St. Louis. And um, I know now it's Commercial Bank. Uh, I really hope Commercial Bank doesn't go anywhere. Because that's our commercial bank. main hub. I thought commercial, was, commercial Bank was smaller than Chemical and Chemical is... Well, sometimes those mid-sized small banks like Chemical Commercial have a lot better ability to be nimble in the marketplace than the big ones today. Right. And, and a lot of times it's, it's, they're getting acquired. So, so First Bank right. didn't disappear, it just became Mercantile Bank. And same thing, that's what's going on with chemical. You know, it's just, yeah, they're not going anywhere. They've just been a part of their consolidation. Yeah. Yeah, but you don't have First Bank anymore. I mean, you, don't, you can't find a First Bank. No, no, because it's hard because they merged with, you know, it was supposed to be a merger. But if you talk to people who. It was a sale. Yeah, it was a sale. I mean, if you talk to people who were, who were I, I was involved in it. It was a sale. Yeah, you, <laughs> Sam knows. Sam knows. But so, it's so the same thing with chemical. I mean, it's uh, being it's a it's sale. Sold. It was a sale. It was a sale. Rainmaker yeah. sold it. Yeah. Yeah. But but I look at like Morgan Stanley and stuff. You know, they're good solid companies. But if you have this, is really not our money, and it's something we got to keep an eye on. If, if you're only guaranteed in there, if it, I don't even know the FDIC them, you know, I, I, I don't know if that's insured to them or not. It's something really to look at, I think, you know, because it's not our money. And, and I don't think they're going anywhere and there's no panic or anything, but. Um, okay. All right. Very good. Thanks, Michelle. You're welcome. Thanks, Michelle. You're welcome. Okay, other financial businesses. We need a resolution to adopt the greater, the, the Gratiot, the greater, the greater, the greater, the greater, the greater, the greater budget general appropriation act and millage rates for fiscal year 2020, 2021. This is something we do every year. Yeah. Well, the wording in this is wrong. 
Um, first of all, we don't have a copy of the 2020-2021. And uh, I highlighted all the way through here of things that um, I was a little concerned about. Well, that is wonderful because that's why I brought it to you to look at. Um, you won't actually pass this resolution until September. Um, oh, okay. So this is, this yeah. is the first piece of the budget book that I bring to you. Um, uh, Tracy and I did a very thorough rehashing of this, updating this last year. So what I did is I took last year's version of it that you passed and updated it uh, with wording and dates for our upcoming budget year. So this will be a working be document. This won't be voted on tonight. So if there are suggestions, that's why I brought it to you now. There's no dollar figures under yeah. the millage rates, but the millage rates are in your packet. You know, so they're... And I didn't see that notice till all the way at the end. I think it would be easier for us and particularly for the public if that was maybe to the top. That, hey, this is a, either put copy or working copy, you know, for passing in... September. I put draft yes. right in the in the, um, the title of the document. So I don't see I, draft. I don't, uh, yeah, I don't have draft on mine. Draft's not on here. Chris, add a draft watermark and then um, make sure draft is at the top. And um, right, yeah, that'll be clear well, enough, I think. Yeah, because it didn't. If it if it was, it didn't come. If the watermark it didn't come through here, it was just a. No, he doesn't have water a watermark yet. I'm suggesting he no, do okay. so along with the All title right. so, so that it hits. So, so what you're saying is it's not for publication yet. It's just for our perusal and any anything that we would. Right, because the theory is it, online right now. No. Huh? Well, it's in the packet. It's in the, it's in the packet, and the packet is online. Yeah, but can right. somebody go in and pull it up? Yeah. Sure. Hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I mean, the idea here is if we were, if for some reason we said, well, you know, we we want a different number for the sheriff. You know, we, we don't, we're cutting the road patrol or we're cutting, you know, library or whatever, because we can levy up to, you know, a certain amount of money, but we can levy less if, if, if we choose. If we don't, um, you know, I, I don't ever remember that happening, but we do have Get the, power to. the power to do that. Um, you know, if you look at most of them, they're just fractionally below you know, so park, you know, park is up 2.35 and it's going to be 0.3493, you know, but that's, that's just kind of our, our due diligence and, you know, considering. Have these, I guess I have to go back to the old one. I wanted to see if they've gone up. Someone, there's exactly the same amount. No, they can't move up. If they can't move up, they can only, we can only move them down. We can up, all these are up twos. No, no, and in most cases, you know, for the countywide villages, you know, because of wind revenue, the, the revenues generated, I mean, they've been up and down, but the trend's been up, but then eventually they're gonna go down. But, but the actual rates, which is what we have the authority to set. And these would be the rates that were passed uh, two months ago when Keegan brought his report to you to- That's what I remembered. Yeah. To send, to the state. Mm -hmm. And these are, these are the rates that have been set for this year. One other thing here, uh, now be it resolved number 18, and then it jumps to down be it resolved number 20. There's no 19. That's a good catch. Yep, very good. Yes. Is there a 19? Was there a 19 on, is this last year's pretty much copied? There could be a number of reasons why that happened. Of which none of them I am aware of, so I don't know how to answer that. At some point, I'm that, sure there was a 19. That's why we started looking at this in June. Correct. <laughs> in September. I think it's good to have it. Hey, just look at it. There's no big, yeah. you just look at it. I said the substantive issue really is, is you know, I, and I, I, again, we know, but we haven't talked about changing any of the millage rates. Anything else that we need to bring before finance? 
If not, I take a motion to pay the bills and move, return to the meeting of the full board. So moved. Support. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 That motion clearly passes. Back to you, George. Very good. Thank you very much. Well, I'm pleased to tell you that we went through this meeting. I do have something, George. I think you're going to want back for the um, result. Okay. Yeah. Um, the Veterans Affairs, I think you're going to want approval for you to sign this amendment. This amendment. Yeah, I, I thought about that at the time, and then oh, when we got the Q&A, I forgot about it. Yeah. So I, and that's back. Let's go back to the Yep. Yeah. I will move to authorize the chair to sign the grant amendment for the Department of Veteran Affairs as presented. Support. I'm supported. Any other discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. okay. Thanks. Good catch. Oh. Well, you're the clerk. That's why we pay ourselves. That's why we pay her all. You get the big bucks. <laughs> all right. Oh. There you go. Anything else? I think we've pretty well covered it. I, I think it was a pretty, very informative. I learned a lot tonight about about video, <laughs> this other stuff. Angie, are these for us? I just can't believe how many of our sheriff's employees I've had as students. But they're, but like you said, they're all they're good kids. They're not kids anymore. I shouldn't say that. Well, they're students. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've got some. We've good young, some, young made people. Some excellent, excellent young people. hires. Young people, because they're not just old. A reminder: people. when everybody leaves, to go out the back door, please, because the court officers already left for the evening. Yep. Yeah. The alarm is on. Yeah, you should start parking up the back. All right. All right. I don't know, I guess. I don't need a motion. Move to adjourn. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Uh, Mike, just to let you know, I usually make copies and give one to each one of my townships and city. Okay. We're, 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 we're,